Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. The rubber is really hitting the road for a lot of electric vehicle stocks. The industry is growing. Demand is growing for electric vehicles. Sales are up across the board. It seems like everything's going really well, but now companies have to prove that they can make money. And the market is not reacting well to what we've seen lately. There are a number of challenges that EV companies are facing. We may even see a few bankruptcies in the coming year or two. So why are EV stocks down so much? And what does the future for this industry look like? That's what I want to dig into in today's video. My name is Travis Holliam. Thank you for watching Rive Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all of my coverage, including on the electric vehicle space. Let's go through a few Let's go through a few big highlights that have happened just in the last couple of weeks, because I think this is really what's driving the trend in electric vehicle stocks. The first thing we always have to start with is Tesla. Tesla announced just this week that it's actually reducing the price of the Model S and Model X vehicles. Now, this comes after big price reductions across the board in all of its vehicles, particularly with the Model 3 and Model Y, which are its lower end vehicles in January. So what we're seeing from Tesla is that prices are starting to come down. Now, now, as a result, margins will come down, but I think this opens up a question about demand. I will get to that a little bit more with some of its competitors later in this discussion, but Tesla's inventory was actually up 55,000 units in the last two quarters of 2022. That's when they instituted the price reductions in January of 2023. Elon Musk said, price really matters. So that means that when you lower prices, demand for your vehicles goes up. That's the situation Tesla is in today. They're trying to get more volume out the door and they're prioritizing volume over profitability per vehicle. That has been clear in the numbers over the last year. And that trend looks like it's going to continue for the foreseeable future. So if prices are coming down for Tesla vehicles, which are the most abundant on the market today. What does that mean for competitors like Rivian and Lucid and some of the smaller startups? it doesn't really bode well for their pricing either. We saw recent earnings reports from Lucid and Rivian also show that demand for vehicles may be down. This is in line with the price changes that I talked about from Tesla, but Lucid actually explicitly announced that the number of reservations that it has on its books were down from a quarter ago. That can, that's a two quarter trend that they've seen. And Rivian actually decided not to report its reservations despite reporting that since becoming a public company. So the implication there is that they may not have as much demand as they thought they did coming into 2023. There's a reason that in Econ 101, you learn about supply and demand. If demand goes down, prices come down, profitability comes down as a result, and companies are starting to feel that cash crunch. That's why this week's announcement that Rivian was going to raise $1.3 billion in a debt offering is another cause for concern. The company has about $12 billion in cash on the balance sheet. So in theory, it should have plenty of cash to be able to ramp up production that's existing normal Illinois facility and build out the project that it's building in Georgia. But given its current rate of cash burn and slow ramp of production, it's not gonna be generating positive cash flow from operations for quite a while. So now it's going to debt markets to try to fill any cash void that it may had over the next four or five years. That's another concern. These are just like little alarm bells going that are going off for investors. And they keep happening over and over and over again. Another one of those red flags was Lordstown Motors saying that it has $220 million in cash, but doesn't really know when it's going to get to cash flow positive. So that stock continues to fall. The company had just $194,000 in revenue is trying to outsource its manufacturing to Foxconn. So in theory, there might be a reasonable business model there. But if you don't get to the point where you can generate positive cash flow, even $220 million in cash on the balance sheet isn't going to get you very far. And right now we're seeing that both debt and equity investors are not particularly interested in funding these companies in perpetuity. That gets to the macro picture, which is the backdrop that investors really need to think about because this has changed over the last decade. Basically, since before even the great financial crisis, we've had very low interest rates that has been fuel for buying things like automobiles and homes. That's fueled a lot of the growth that we've seen in the electric vehicle market, but that's starting to reverse. Interest rates are rising. They weren't just rising last year. They've actually risen in the past month. So that's making vehicles more and more difficult to purchase for consumers. At the same time, all of these companies are trying to ramp up production. Rivian's going to 
increase production 100% this year. Tesla has a target of increasing production 50% annually. And that's on top of all these other smaller companies trying to bring their products online. We're seeing a flood of supply into the market just as fewer and fewer consumers are able to afford electric vehicles because of those high interest rates. The other thing potentially on the horizon is a recession. There's more and more talk about that as interest rates go up, the economy is starting to slow and big businesses like the auto business to tend to be very cyclical. If this is a down cycle for the market, the companies that didn't have an established business, didn't have positive free cash flow, they're going to be in trouble before some of their bigger rivals. That's why we're seeing a lot of these companies pull back. Even a stock like QuantumScape, which has potentially really revolutionary technology, you need to have demand increasing for those batteries. You need to have low interest rates to be able to fund that business long-term so that they can get to a scaled production level. That's another company that continues to fall as investors question when they're gonna to get to a sustainable point. So add all of this together and you start to see cracks in the electric vehicle growth story and profitability story. Not every company is going to be Tesla of 2022. Even Tesla itself is starting to face a number of challenges, being forced to lower vehicle prices to try to fill, to try to hit their production targets. All of this points to a lot of negative trends in 2023 for electric vehicle stocks. This is an area that I do have exposure to. I bought shares of Rivian earlier this year, and I recently put a video out questioning whether that was the wrong decision, but this is absolutely a space I'm not adding money to right now because I think it's just too high risk, too many questions and too many headwinds for 2023. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Give this video a like and share it with anybody you think would be interested in learning more about electric vehicle stocks and the economics behind them. Subscribe to Rive Investing, and I'll see you here next time.